Hallelujah. Are we blessed, church? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I am very blessed. I am very blessed for all your lives, you brothers and sisters who are gathered in the house of the Lord this afternoon, and people who are joining us online. We are very blessed with your life. You know, just like uh, Brother Alan said, that as a human, as a natural being, it is normal for us to go through things, go through difficulties, go through trials, go through tribulations. It is normal for us, my dear brothers and sisters, to have worries, to have concerns. And yeah, I just want to be able to stand in the front today and just to encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, by the name that is above every name, who is no other than Jesus Christ. Amen? So, whatever are the things that you are going through right now, problems, karamdaman, illness, sickness, whatever worries and concerns that you may have, Jesus Christ is our strong and firm foundation. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the rock of our faith. Amen, church. Amen. Jesus Christ is the rock of our faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I invite each and every one? Welcome. Good afternoon. Can I invite each and every one to stand up as we welcome the Word of God. In the book of Psalms, chapter 116, verses 12 to 17, the Word of the Lord says, What, I, what shall I render the Lord for all His benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the day death of His saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O most gracious Lord and heavenly God, truly indeed that there is none like you. There is no other God before you there is no other God apart from you. There is no other name that is above every name but Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you so much for gathering us this afternoon. We thank you so much, Lord, for bringing our footstep in your house that we may corporately worship you, that we may corporately honor you, that we may corporately pray together, that we may corporately hear, listen, learn, and heed of your words. Our Lord Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and be our teacher this afternoon. Illuminate your scriptures, O God. Let it that it will come to us plain and simple. Give us that spirit of understanding that we may apply understanding on your words. Lord, we rebuke whatever works and wiles and the schemes of the enemy that will try to hinder us in receiving from you this afternoon. Lord, your servant continues to humble himself in your presence. 
Hide me behind you, Father God. Lord, let not be me, O God. Let not be my voice. Let not be my physique, Father God. Let not be my physical and natural. Be considered, Father. But I pray, let the light that shines through the glory of the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, encapsulate the heart and mind of each and every one this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's all be seated, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I know, my dear brothers and sisters, today, it's nearly mid-afternoon. I know that if you contemplate back till the beginning of time this morning, or in every day. Contemplate back last year. Contemplate back years ago. I know and I do believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that there are so much that the Lord has done for us. Amen? Amen, church. I know that the Lord has simply been generous to us. I know that the Lord has simply gave so much for us. Amen? And my dear brothers and sisters, have you thanked the Lord for all the good and great and mighty things that He has done? Have you? The passage, the question here, my dear brothers and sisters, is David present it as a question. It says in here, What shall I render to the Lord for all His benefits to me? In other words, how can I repay the Lord? How shall I return to the Lord? What can I offer the Lord? Amen? And if you forgive me, in Tagalog, in our native tongue, it says in here, Ano ang pwede kong ipagkaloob sa Panginoon sa lahat ng kabutihan na Kanyang ibinigay sa akin? Amen. What can I return to the Lord in every, in all the good things, for all the benefits that He has given to me? You know, the song that we were singing earlier, it says in here, if you bear with me, if I can find it, it says in here, there are no words good enough to thank you. Amen? Amen. There are no words good enough to thank you. There are no words good enough to express my thanksgiving. Amen, church. You know, have you experienced receiving a gift that far exceeds your expectation? I will use an example. Few years ago when I was still working in Southampton, and we have this um, uh, assistant who is new to the team. And it falls on Christmas. So as you would imagine, the team would have um, secret Santa. And we agreed during the time that something small, sharing gift with the worth of 10 pounds. But this guy, Simon, his name is, sorry Simon, I'm using you as an example. This guy, Simon, his name is, because he is new to the team, he picked up, the boss, <laughs> he picked up the manager of the team. And where everyone is giving their best, Simon gave a coffee maker. Wow. And we were all astonished. And I asked Simon, Simon, how much is that? said, it's worth 250 But I received a discount. Manager, Han, Luisa, he said, 
you know, I cannot thank you enough. Of course. Amen. I cannot thank you enough. Yes, it is Christmas. Yes, it is giving gift. But I cannot thank you enough because I'm just expecting 10 pounds worth or at least maybe a little bit more. But it's not a coffee maker worth 250 pounds. I cannot thank you enough. I don't know what to do. But good. Louisa said, after all this, he went to Simon. He said, Simon, you better return that coffee maker. <laughs> But how about us, my dear brothers and sisters? Have we received a present that far exceeds our expectation? Because if we do, if we do receive a present that far exceeds our expectation, we felt that as if a mere saying thank you is not enough. If we receive something that far exceeds our expectation, it's as if we have that tendency to be able to, you want to do something special for that person to say thank you. Amen? In the same way, my dear brothers and sisters, that if we consider what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, First and foremost, what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in the cross. Amen. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says in here that Jesus Christ was pierced for our transgressions. We were the reason that Jesus Christ was pierced. We were the reason that Jesus Christ was crushed. It is our iniquities. Amen. We were the reason that Jesus Christ was punished. Amen. We were the reason that He bore wounds and afflictions. My dear brothers and sisters, let's start in the cross. What Jesus Christ has given in the cross, He suffered, He died, He gave His life in our stead, my dear brothers and sisters. He sacrificed His life for our sake. He took our place in the cross. Amen? Amen? And like what I have said, today and every day, Jesus Christ did not stop, did not pause on being generous. Jesus remains to bless us in every day. Jesus remains to work for us in every day. Amen? Amen. He continues to extend His mercy, His grace, His loving kindness that we have read earlier. Amen, church. And with all that, personally for me, I feel that it is very inadequate to just simply say, thank you. My dear brothers and sisters, who has received the greatest gift that Jesus Christ has given us? He gave us eternal life when we do not deserve it. Amen? Amen. Have you received yours? Amen. Amen. Did you deserve it? Have you earned it? No, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a free gift out of His generosity that He has given us. Amen. Have you received yours? Anyone? The room is a little bit quiet. Amen. Have you received yours? Amen. Glory to God. Amen, church. Hallelujah. You know, we have prayed for a lot of people. Last year, we have prayed for a lot of people. And 
through their testimony, the Lord works. I was hoping, I was, uh, 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 when I last spoke with Kichi, I was hoping that she would be here because I would like her to share her testimony on that October 7th when they were attacked by the Hamas. And she was there. And she said, during that time that, you know, Pastor, I thought that I will die. The only moment that remained in my mind was when I was here a few weeks back and the church was praying for me. How many more of us, me, myself, my dear brothers and sisters, if I contemplate last year, there were many times that I have felt and experienced very apparent, very vivid, the hands of the Lord working. Amen. And just merely saying thank you to the Lord is very inadequate. Kulang. Amen, church. If you have that so much in your heart that you are keeping, that you say, Lord, saying thank you is not enough. No? In fact, if you have that, it is not hard to say, Ayo, 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 Amen. It is not very hard to say, Ayo, 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 if you want to thank the Lord. Amen, church. It is not very hard to shout, Hallelujah. It is not very hard to say, How great are you, Lord? Amen. So the question this afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters, is how can I thank the Lord for all the goodness that He has done in me? Have you got any idea, church? Have you got any idea how can we possibly show an appreciation to the Lord? Amen. Psalms 116 give us a blueprint of some ways on how to show our gratitude to the Lord and all the good things that He has done. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, we can give Him our praise. Amen. We can give Him our praise. Praise, like what we have said, my dear brothers and sisters, is synonymous to thanksgiving. I know sometimes it seems thanksgiving is inadequate, but sometimes as well it's the best thing that we can offer. Amen. Number one, we can give Him our praise. In verse 13, it says in here, I will lift up the cup of salvation, and call upon the name of the Lord. Is that not an act of praising the Lord? Do you agree? Is that not an act of thanking the Lord? What shall I return to the Lord for all the benefits that He has given to me? And in verse 13, it says in there, we can give Him our praise. We can give Him our thanksgiving. I shall lift up the cup of my salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Amen, church. Now, as a nation, as a nation, we are very sports-minded. We are very sports-related. Amen? Football, rugby, basketball, you name it. And my dear brothers and sisters, it is very Expected. It is very acceptable that when you go and support your sports team, when you go and watch your sports team, it is very acceptable for you to wear their jersey, their uniform. Amen? Who have been in a sporting event recently? And it is very acceptable if Lexin and Hi Hi in here, one supports Chelsea, one supports Manchester United. And it's very acceptable to wear their jersey 
when you go and watch them play. And it is very acceptable to clap your hands, to cheer them, to shout when the team scored. Amen? Am I making sense? The same when you come to church during Sunday worship. It is very acceptable. In fact, it is expected for us to cheer for the Lord. Amen. For us to cheer for the Lord. For us to shout, Hallelujah! Amen! 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 Hallelujah! It is very acceptable, my dear brothers and sisters. You are allowed. Amen! Maybe, sorry, forgive me, maybe the reason that sometimes when we go to church, we are a little bit quiet because maybe we thought that we are not allowed to sing. Maybe we thought that we are not allowed to clap and dance. Maybe we thought that it is only for the music leader. No, you are allowed. Amen. Or let's say you are expected to cheer for the Lord as well. Amen. Amen. In Psalms chapter 63, verse 3 to 4, we read that earlier. Because your loving kindness is better than life. You know, sometimes people cannot praise, people cannot praise freely in the church because of being demure, because of the poise. It says in here, the love of the Lord is better than life. And because of that, my dear brothers and sisters, my lips shall praise you. Amen. I will bless you while I, will, I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Amen, church. So to answer that question, what shall I return to the Lord? My dear brothers and sisters, it is very biblical to vocally praise God. It is biblical to lift up our hands in worship. It is very biblical to clap our hands. It is very biblical to dance in worship. It is very biblical to kneel down in worship. Amen? Amen. It is very biblical to cry to the Lord in worship. Amen, church? In fact, it is not only biblical. It is the good thing to do when worshiping the Lord. Amen? You should not be reluctant. Again, when I explain that in our own language, my dear brothers and sisters, huwag nating ipagdamot sa Panginoon ang ating pag-aawit. Huwag nating ipagdamot sa Panginoon ang ating pagpalakpak, ang ating pagtaas ng kamay, ang pagluhod, ang pag-iyak sa Kanya dahil wala siyang ipinagdamot sa atin. Amen. Amen. Let us not be reluctant. King David says when he was worshiping the Lord with all his strength, with all his might, singing, Come and see what the Lord has done for me. And David's son, Michal, it says, displeased him. But what did King David say? You know, I wouldn't mind to look undignified in front of the people if by doing that I am able to give the highest worship to the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. And especially those people who are in this side during praise and worship because we cannot expect the people that we are leading if there is nothing to follow in here. Amen, church. So music team, Sister Michelle, maybe we need to look into that. Maybe those are the things that we need to be looking at moving forward. Amen, church. Because as a church, 
and praising and worshiping the Lord. We ought to be led by the charisma of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church? If the Holy Spirit led us to raise our hand, to clap, to dance, we should not stop it. We should not hinder it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So number one, we can give Him our thanksgiving, we can give Him our praise. Second, what can I give to the Lord for all the good things that He has done to me? Second, it says in there, I should keep my promises to God. Amen. In verse 14, it says in there, I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His people. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Second is, I should keep my promises to the Lord. I should keep my vows to the Lord in the presence of all His people. My dear brothers and sisters, promises are not meant to be broken. Yeah. People say, promises are meant to be broken. Ilista mo sa tubig. No. Promises are meant to be kept. Amen. So the question of, how can I return to the Lord for all the good things that He has done to me? Keep your promise. Keep your promise. Uphold the vow that you have done to the Lord. Amen. You know, when we come to the Lord, it may be the first time that we are accepting the Lord as our personal Lord and Savior. It may be the hundred times that we are accepting the Lord. What do we do in exchange? Isn't it? We do not just simply come to the Lord and say, Lord, I want you, I accept you. What do we do in exchange? Repentance. Amen. That is the building blocks. We repent. Repentance. In simple terms, what does repentance mean? Lord, I want to change. Lord, I don't want to do the things that I formerly do. Amen. That's what repentance is. Amen, church. Lord, gusto kong magbago. Lord, gusto ko nang baguhin ang aking buhay. And those are promises made to the Lord. Amen, church. When you pray to receive Christ, you made a vow to God that you would turn away from your previous sinful lifestyle. And that's what repentance is. Amen, church. You pledge to follow the commands of the Lord. Amen. Jesus said in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 20, that everyone who would come to believe in Him must follow His commandments. Amen, church. Amen? Amen. So we are not excluded. If we claim to follow the Lord, if we claim to believe in the Lord, the next thing in there, the Lord says that, teach them to obey all the commandments I have given you. Amen, church? Amen? Amen. Who is your best body, boys? Church, who is your best body? Jesus. Amen? Taman is my second best body because Jesus is my best body. Amen? But that only become possible. John 15, 14, it says in there, You are my friends if you do my commands. We are all Jesus' best body because we are all doing the commands of the Lord. Amen, church? Yes, Lord. 
We mean it with a good intention. Sometimes we fail, or most of the times we fail. But Lord, enable us to be your best body. Enable us to be able to adhere and do everything that you have commanded us. Amen, church. Enable us to uphold, to do the vow, the promises that we made. Amen, church. Of course, as a human being, we are corruptible. As a human being, we are not perfect. As a flesh, my dear brothers and sisters, we are always at risk. Amen. In fact, even Apostle Paul that we all look up to, the greatest apostle to the Gentiles, and Romans 7.15, he says in there that, I do not understand myself because the things that I want to do, I do not do them. The things that I do not want to do, those are the things that I love doing. And Apostle Paul, we can relate. Amen, church. But my dear brothers and sisters, that should not be an excuse. Amen. That should not be an excuse for us not to do our promises, our vow to the Lord. Amen. Third, my dear brothers and sisters, we can honor the Lord. Sabi ni Sister Grace, through our offerings. Amen? Amen? How can I return to the Lord for all the good things that He has done for me? Sister Grace says, we can honor the Lord through our tithes and offering. Through our offering. In verse 17, it says in there, I will offer to you my sacrifices of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Amen? In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 28, it says in here, O nations of the world, recognize, that, re recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory He deserves. Bring your offering and come to worship Him. Worship the Lord and all His holy splendor. Amen, church. Amen. We ought to give our offering. And when we say offering, it's not always monetary. Although when we talk about offering, it seems that our mind is very easy to switch on about monetary. But no, my dear brothers and sisters, everything that we are doing to the Lord, everything as a mode of worship to the Lord is an offering to the Lord. Amen? Amen. When in fact, what the Lord Wants, desire, or being pleased, my dear brothers and sisters, is for us to offer our bodies as a holy offering, pleasing, holy, and acceptable to the Lord. Amen, church. That's the basic building blocks. Whatever it is that you are holding on your hands, that is just secondary. The primary is what is in you. Amen, church. Amen. You know, when you are children, when we were younger, when talks about gift, there is nothing in our mind but the, the thought of, I'm wondering what will I receive. Eva? When you were young, when you were young, there's nothing important when talks about gift that, oh, I'm curious what I will receive. But when we grow up, when we mature up, especially when we became parents, we now appreciate, we now realize that it is better to give than to receive. Isn't it, parents? There is no greater joy in you than to be able to give the, the best gift to your children. Amen. 
If you, their children, because they are not earning, because they are young, if they cannot give you back, it doesn't matter. Amen. What matters is for you to be able to give the best gift to your children. Amen. Are we mature? Amen, church. Amen. Not just in age, but in a position, in a standing as a Christian. Amen. Amen. Therefore, our offering to the Lord is not proportionate to what it is that we receive. Amen. So what if the Lord stop working for you? He is, is still God. He still deserves your offering. Amen, church? Amen. So, don't be hindered by the word of the Lord, by the Bible. When it says the tithes is 10%, if you want to give 50%, welcome. Amen, church. But it must have to come from within. There is no point giving tithes as well if you do not understand if you are not convicted, amen, it must come from within. Amen, church. But in order for the word of God to be applied, we must have to receive it from our heart first. Amen. That's why sometimes, how many times that we accept the Lord, how many times that we repent from the Lord, and it seems that in a, it's an effective because it is not coming from the heart. So sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, amen, it must come from our heart. Jesus Christ, give us another reason why giving is important to the life of believers. In Matthew 6, 19 to 29, it says in here, Do not lay up for yourself treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy and thieves break and steal, but lay for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break and steal, for where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. Amen. To simplify this, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is saying that it is very wrong to put all our hope in earthly treasures. Amen. Because if you put all your treasures in earthly treasure, there is nothing waiting for you in the other side. Amen. Amen. This is earth. If you put everything, if you invest everything in this earth, if you go to the afterlife, there is nothing waiting for you there. Amen? Children, have you played, are you, have you played Monopoly? Have you played Monopoly? Have you guys played Monopoly? Yeah? Monopoly is this um, make-believe economic board game. And you build up hotels, you invest, you trade money. They come with the orange money paper. Amen. At the end of the day, at the end of the game, if you are the winner, because what happens in there is you need to grow your investment. You need to bankrupt your opponent. At the end of the day, even if you become the winner, after that game, it doesn't make sense. Amen. Amen. After the game is completed, if you are hungry, you cannot go to the shop with your monopoly money and buy goods. You cannot. Amen, church. The monopoly is only as good as while you are sitting there and playing. After the playing time, it doesn't matter. The same thing living here in this earth. If everything we invest in earthly pleasure... If everything we invest in bags, we invest in clothing, we invest on earthly things. After your time here in this earth, there is nothing waiting for you in the afterlife. Amen. No matter how much money you have in the bank, 
If you die, you cannot bring it there. Amen. Amen. But you know what? While you are here, you can send it there. That's what Sister Grace said. Invest in the kingdom of God. Amen. Invest in the furtherance of the work of the Lord. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, today we have learned from the word of God the question of what can I return to the Lord for all the good things that he has done to me. And we have agreed that all of us has received a good things from the Lord. Amen? Amen, church? We are in agreement for that. So paano tayo makapagbalik sa Panginoon? How can we return to the Lord? Obviously, this is not exhaustive. These are just few. Marami pang iba. There are many ways on how to return to the Lord. But this afternoon, we learned that it is very good to start. And number one, giving praise to God. Giving thanks to God. Amen, church? Number two, we need to keep our promises. We need to keep uphold the vow that we have done for the Lord. Amen? And number three, we have to give our offering to the Lord. We have to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen, church? Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us welcome the music team, church. And just the, uh, the yung song na kinanta natin. Amen? There are no words good enough to thank the Lord. But sometimes, that pure and true thanksgiving that comes from the heart is the best that we can give to the Lord. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Siguro tignan natin yung part ng hallelujah to build up na. Hallelujah. Let's stand up, church. Are we blessed, church? Amen. Think about all the goodness that the Lord has done for us. For our family, for our loved ones. Amen. And this afternoon, why don't we come to the Lord with all our heart and say that, Lord, I know I cannot say thank you enough. Alam ko na wala akong maibigay sa iyo, Panginoon, na kapalit ng iyong lahat ng iyong ibinigay. But my dear brothers and sisters, from the deepest grievances of our heart, with all our mind and spirit, pasalamatan natin ang Panginoon. Amen. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every tribe, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Well, see, you and glory we build. This is our earnest and desire. Worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every time. Every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people. Every love, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people, every land. Giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. By the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every tongue, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory. Giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Once again, my dear brothers and sisters, let's sing hallelujah. More than just a song, let it be our personal message to the Lord. Let it be our answer to the question, What can I give the Lord? for all the benefits that He has done for me. 
church, with all conviction, from the bottom of our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our soul, with all our heart, and with all our understanding. Once again, can we sing that song, Hallelujah, as our personal and direct message to the Lord, that chorus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, by the blood of Christ we stand. Every time, every tribe, every people, every land, giving glory, giving honor, giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God. Giving praise unto the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Lamb of God. Hallelujah! Yes, Lord, hallelujah! 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 You are most worthy, O Lord. Come on, people of God. Let's utter praise. Let utter praise to the Lord. He is worthy. He is worthy. There is no name that is above every name. That Jesus, Jesus is the answer for you. Jesus is the answer to your prayer. Jesus is the answer for your infirmities. People online, Jesus is the answer in today's problem. Jesus is the answer in today's unrest. Jesus is the answer in today's confusion. Jesus is the answer in today's confusion even in the churches. My dear brothers and sisters, whatever predicaments that you are going through right now, whatever predicaments that you represent, your household, your family, your loved ones, your husband, your wife, your parents, your children, your children's children, your in-laws, your friends, your neighbors, your colleague, workmates, your community, the body of Christ, and in the world right now, Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. Hallelujah, Lord. Indeed, Father, we cannot thank you enough for all the good things that you have done for all the good things that you are yet to do. We cannot thank you enough of the past. And certainly we cannot thank you enough of the future. But Lord, teach us to be grounded. Teach us to be surrendered. Teach us to be obedient. Teach us of your ways, O God. Teach us of your wonders in glory. 
teach us to trust in you and you alone. Teach us to come to you. Teach us that you are always waiting for us to come to you. Teach us that to them that who will come to you, you will never drive them away. No judgment. Father, thank you for your company and for your fellowship this afternoon. Look upon your people, O God. They ask in the beginning of the service that they may reconcile with you, that they may be forgiven and cleansed and washed, that they may start in a new beginnings with you. We receive that answer prayer. We receive that answer prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we can go out, we can step out of this worship place brand new, refreshed, rejuvenated, because you have made us new, O God. Spirit, body, and soul. Our physical strength, our physical health, our physical well-being. But so much so, spiritually as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give us a teachable heart that all the good things that you have done for us, that we may return to you by praising you and thanking you. By carrying out, executing our vows and promises to you. And most importantly, by investing in your kingdom. And that means our time, our resources, our talent, our skills, our service, our everything, O oh God. Accept it. Receive it. It is yours, O oh God. It is at your disposal, O oh Lord. Thank you very much. Lord, I pray for the life of each and every one in here. And Father, just as you have ministered upon your servant, Father God, I pray that you minister to them. I pray, O God, that you accompany them, that you walk with them, that you lead them, that you guide them. Just as your servant says, be that still, small voice, albeit it makes the difference. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, remain in us. Do not depart from us. Teach us in the way that we should go and help us not to depart from it. Church, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with you in your family forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen, church. May God bless you all.
Praise God. Let us stand up and let us sing the victory. Yeah, let's Every tribe, every tribe, every tongue, let us worship the Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. There is no one like Hallelujah. you, God. Hallelujah. Uh, Sige nga, you, kung Jesus. ano, pwede nating i-accommodate. May time pa naman. Kantahin nga natin yung ano, the blood by request. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. The blood. Let's continue to worship the Lord Church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
contador dito. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God, thank you Lord for your love and your faithfulness and your goodness. Salamat sa Panginoon na umabot kami ng 23 wedding anniversary. And thank you Lord for your goodness and for your love na andyan ka po lagi sa amin. Salamat, Panginoon. Amen. Amen. At salamat sa mga kapatiran, si your family. Salamat sa inyong suporta. Salamat sa inyong pagmamahal at uh, sa prayer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Copy and paste. Thank you. Um, wow. It's uh, 23. We engaged seven years. So 23 plus seven. 30. 30. Wow. So, uh, nagantos ka ba? Nagantos sa kalipay. Thank you, but God is great. God is uh, He is uh, our God over our family. So we thank God that our relationship is in His. Uh, he is the center. Amen. In our. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, kiss, kiss, daw. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let us pray for them. Uh, Brother Albert, did you wanna come here? And Albert, you wanna uh, Daniel? Hallelujah. Okay, uh, mga kapatid, church, let us uh, extend our hands to them. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Truly indeed, Lord, that we thank you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers this family up from the beginning up until now that they are in their 23rd wedding anniversary, Father God. And on top of that, they said seven years of engagement, courtship. Thank you, Father God. Yes, indeed, Lord, that not only through the life represented uh, by these uh, two children as the fruit of that relationship, we know, Father God, that individually amongst them and corporately through them all, they can look back through the years, O oh God, and they can see your goodness in their lives. They can see, Father God, all the uncountable goodness and favor that you have given their lives. And Father God, we thank you so much because we are a witness how they are thanking you, how they are giving back to you in return, Father God, and all the multitude of ways. So we thank you so much, Lord, as a church, as a family, Father God, we are blessed by this union. We are blessed by this couple, Father. And it has always been a remarkable opportunity and privilege, Father God, to be able to serve you and worship you, O God, with them as co-servants. So thank you very much, Father God. Lord, it is our prayer 
as a church, as a family, Father God, that you continue, Father, to multiply them, spirit, body, and soul. That you continue, Father, to walk with them. That you continue, Father God, to guide them and lead them, Father God. Most importantly, may the faith that you have founded in them, Father God, to be transferred upon their children and their children's children to come. Thank you very much. Lord, teach them to number their years together and may those many years ahead, Father, be spent, Father God, corporately in between them with you, Father God, in the middle. So we thank you so much. We continue to speak blessing. We continue to release blessing, Father God, upon this couple and upon this household. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, uh.